Hello. Take my sunglasses off. So, I thought it would make sense to bring you my top 10 road trip essentials for Australia from the comfort of my very own Mitsubishi Express van. Very exciting. Um, don't worry, I've stopped. I'm not driving. So, for anyone concerned for my safety, I'm obeying the rules. I'm being a good girl. So, here we go. My top 10 travel tips for a road trip in Australia. Sorry about the mess, by the way. As you can see, I've got my big blue suitcase on my bed at the moment. I sleep with it. I haven't got anyone to travel with. And um, I need a cuddle sometimes, hey? <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm going to assume for the purposes of this video that you are planning on buying a car, buying a van, or buying a camper van, or hiring. My tip is to do one of the three. Um, for the buying the car, I would suggest you go four by four. You can drive on the beach, you can be a lot more flexible, you can deck out the back, take out the seats. Um, with a van, like I've got, get short wheelbase, long wheelbase. If you're traveling in a pair, I'd probably go long wheel because it just means you've got that extra bit of space to play with. Um, for a short wheelbase, which is what I've got, um, just fits a bed in the back and then it's got the shelf on the back for my kitchen stuff. And it works for me. I'm not going completely long term, so I enjoy it. Um, my biggest tip for getting a van is, I know it's sexy to have a VW, but save that for the Euro travels. Get a Toyota or a Mitsubishi, the reason being, if your car breaks down, which it could do because you're buying it cheap, you're going to get cheap parts. If you get a VW or something else, or a Ford for example, and you have to replace the parts, you're probably going to be paying a lot more than if you just buy a Toyota or Mitsubishi. Toyota Hiace or Mitsubishi Express, they are my two go-to vans. Number two, plan your route, but don't plan too much. So if you research where you're gonna go, get ideas from other travelers, have a general idea of your definites, your maybes, and just see how you go. Um, probably the biggest planning you'll have to do is if you do have a time limit, work out where you're going from and when you're going to, and then you can work out what's happening in between. My biggest tip for this sort of thing is get Google Maps and add a list so you can save places in a want to go or a road trip list for example I will link you to my East Coast van trip which I've got on mine and what it does it just enables you on the maps that you're using to see them spaced out see how many you've got and then make a plan from there and that just really helped me and then from there you can add stops you can take away stops and that leads me on perfectly to tip number three which is stay flexible the best times you're gonna have on this road trip are often the most spontaneous and my mistake I made the first time I did the East Coast which was actually by a bus was thinking oh I've made my plan I'm gonna be in Sydney for Christmas and I stuck to it and I missed a really amazing opportunity to stay in Byron with some friends so like just let yourself go with the flow if you've got the time for example and you like to place stay there don't think oh we've planned to go here tomorrow night so we need to be there that's not that's not the way you go you've got a van you've got a car this is the most amazing part of having a road trip in a van that you've got yourself rather than a bus, which is the ability to change your plans at a moment's notice. And the best times I've had have often been the absolutely most spontaneous. So definitely don't get stuck down by plans. And the other one is to plan to go slower than you think. So if you're rushing from spot to spot, which I made the mistake of when I went on a little road trip down to Melbourne, we were like, we got to a place and then we were like, oh my God, we're gonna stay there for a day. And then we had to leave so you don't really experience the areas you're going to so just give yourself time relax you're on holiday you're on a road trip enjoy number four is a little bit of a practical tip pre road trip beginnings don't skimp on insurance and don't skimp on roadside assistance they're two different things so you need to get a good insurance pack for your car van camper van bike um, and roadside assistance, RACQ, um, have got a really good range of options. You can do like a survey and just make sure that you're looking at the kilometres you're going to be travelling because the last thing you want to happen is have a really great time, drive to your next destination, break down and have to pay hundreds of dollars for someone to come and pick you up. I think I paid like 165 for one of the RACQ options. There's one higher and one below it, so just have a research and it's definitely worth, definitely worth a look. Number five prepare good music. I am not lying when I say Australian radio is possibly the most horrendous pile of drivel I've ever heard in my life. So if you're on your own, if you're with friends, music's such a big part of traveling, of being on the road. So just prepare your Spotify, get some playlists going. I follow things like the noughties, love a good, love a good classic. 
Um, also, if your friends have good music, follow theirs. My friends got such a good mix of like waking up in the morning, being by the sea, create things that gel for your mood, for the vibe you're feeling, and you'll be very, very happy. I also really enjoy listening to podcasts when I'm driving. My favourite is probably Guys We Fucked. It's absolutely hilarious. Gets people talking about subjects that people aren't necessarily comfortable about, and it's just a real good laugh. Uh, another one, if you feel like you want to be more productive, listen to Jenna Kutcher, uh, Gold Digger really good girl and if you want an audio book audible have a really good like free trial you can get like 30 days free trial and download a free audio book i chose what was it the subtle art of the subtle art of not giving a fuck if you're not feeling motivated feeling a bit lost listen to that audio book by the next destination oh, you'll have like found yourself it'll be great you'll know exactly what to do with your life no i'm kidding but it's very good number six make sure you've got enough water and enough food um, you can get like a $4 water from Coles, from Woolworths, just have it in the car. If you're in the middle of nowhere and you run out of water, you're not going to be particularly happy. Um, and same goes for food. If in doubt, eat ice cream. But other than that, snacks, nuts, bread's always in my car. A big tip for food if you're on your own is kidney beans and beans don't last longer than a day. I, I tried to eat sweet corn after having it in the back of my van for a day yesterday. And it was a little bit sour. So stick to, stick to stuff you know he's gonna keep. <laughs> Number seven, download Tinder or Bumble. Controversial perhaps, but hear me out. My friends at the moment are traveling down the East Coast Tindering, and it doesn't have to be romantic. It is the perfect way of experiencing where you're going with local people. Put on your Tinder, I'm up for adventure. I'm up to be, sh I wanna be shown around. Um, obviously in your, if you're on your own, be careful, but I've met some great people through it. These girls are smashing it. Like, they've been fishing. They've been beds for the evening. That's the other thing Tinder's great for. That's the other thing it's great for. If you're fed up with the van, it's a roof. And it's also showers. People are always willing to help you out. If, you, if they know you're traveling, they'll be like, come in, like, cook some food, have a shower. We'll go to the pub. It's brilliant. My goal for this road trip was to genuinely experience Australia the local way. I did the bus. I've done the tourist thing. That didn't really float my boat. But this way, downloading Tinder, downloading apps like Friendship Apps as well, you just get to be shown around by people that live there and it's so great. You just do things that you would never do if you were just looking on Google or watching what everyone else has done. Number eight, take things that will charge your electronic devices. So uh, I've got a little thing that goes into my uh, cigarette lighter which has two USB ports in it. So you're with friends, you're not gonna be fighting. The other thing I'd highly recommend, which I don't actually have, is having a double-ended USB. So iPhones these days and Androids have mini USBs and the speak, the headphones go in that. So you can't do an aux cable and charge your phone. So you can buy ones that have doubles. And relating to my earlier point about radio, you don't want to be listening to rubbish while you're charging your phone. So it's definitely a worthy investment. I think they're like 20 bucks or something. Number nine, take some petrol with you. I have not currently got this and I'm not taking my own advice because I'm not in the middle of nowhere. But if you're traveling places like Western Australia in particular or throughout the middle, you don't want to get to a servo with very little petrol in your van and have the servo not have any petrol. I know people that have been stuck before for like a day or so waiting for the oil to come to the petrol station to then be able to fill up. So it's just always worth um, not taking the risk, get a little can, put it in the back and just have that to just keep your mind at ease that if you do run out, you'll be well looked after. And number 10, keep it simple. You do not need to spend an arm and a leg decking out your van and constructing it. I went to Bunnings to get the wood for my bed frame. Other people go uh, to Timber Yards, which is an even cheaper option. Op shops will be your new best friend. I got $1 sheets, I got like a dooley, and I've chopped it up to make it look a little bit more homely, to cover up my shelves in the back. Pans, a cafetiere, everything. Just go in, support the charity. As you go as well, buy clothes. I've got like $1 t-shirts. Don't pack, don't pack heavy. Pack light. I will, however, admit going to Kmart and spending $10 on copper fairy lights. But it was worth it. And if you're after a cheap adventure, Bunnings is perfect because you drive through the wood section to pick up the wood. I may be the only person in Australia that's really excited by that, but I'm a cheap day. It was fascinating. I loved it. You get to shop, you get to walk, you get to put it on the car. Oh, it's fantastic. It's like you should put a Bunnings on your Google Maps to stop at and just experience, in my opinion. 
So there you have it, my top 10 road trip essentials for traveling around Australia in your van, camper van or car. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think and I'll be bringing more videos. So give me a like, give me a comment and obviously if you could subscribe that would be wonderful because I'm new to this and I need some friends. Ha, ha, ha.